Fozzie Whitaker now joining us here on set for NFL Pro Timing Day. Fozzie, what have you seen from your guys so far? Uh, you know, I've seen guys that came out here. You can tell that they've worked in the offseason, uh, just training, getting ready for this time, this moment. Uh, I see a lot of determination in their eyes. I feel like uh, there are people out here that, that's ready to go get it. And I've trained with these guys, you know, over the seasons. And uh, I know what type of people they are. And so I know they put in the work and uh, they're showcasing it right now. And I think they're doing a great job. What was it like for you to not be able to take place in this? Uh, you know, it's tough just because it's, it's one of those things that you've always dreamt of whenever you were younger, uh, being able to perform. I've always wanted to know my 40 time. I've always wanted <laughs> to know my shuttle time. Uh, you know, I never was able to do that. And uh, I always attribute it to a blessing of God that coming off of an injury, I didn't have to, I wasn't forced to do that. And uh, I know even before I was healthy, I probably wouldn't have had a good time and it probably would have reflected poorly upon me. But uh, being able not to do that, it, it kind of has its pros and cons. Like I always want to know, how fast am I really, you know, what can I really run? But at the same time, it's just uh, an honor to be able to, to be a part of something like this. But you bring it up, good point. You're not consistently doing the 40 and the right, different agility right. drills. These are things almost designed for this combine. Exactly, exactly. So it's something that uh, obviously a lot of training goes into, into place whenever you're trying to, you know, perform the best, especially on one day. So there's a lot of stress and trauma that goes uh, with that as well. But uh, like I said, it's still a great opportunity to perform in front of scouts and the scouts get to see how you handle pressure for the first time uh, before you actually get on a big level. So how did you do it? How were you able to go from a guy that had a very serious knee injury, wasn't able to participate on timing day, to a guy that's now in the NFL? Uh, really, I just had to stay humble and, and keep my head down and, and continue to work. Uh, even the guys in my class that, that were able to participate, got drafted, uh, people that went on to pro teams and, and played throughout uh, most of the 2012 season, uh, like, you know, in my heart, I felt like, you know, I could have had an opportunity to be a part of that if I wasn't hurt. But uh, like I said, I'm very religious and spiritual, and I know God had a different route for me. And uh, I still was able to be practice squad with the Arizona Cardinals last year at the end of the season. And uh, it, it's been a, a blessing just to be a part of that. And, and the ride that I've taken is a journey and a testament to say that, hey, he still has his hands on me no matter what I do. Yep. Well, you were also part of that ride for Mike Davis, playing with him for a couple of years to see him get to this point. Now, what do you think gives him a chance at the NFL level? Uh, well, like, like you said, I, I heard you all spitting out the stats earlier. He, he's a guy that has a deep threat for sure. Yeah. Uh, he makes a lot of guys in one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, you know, you know, make them miss. He can, he can go up and grab the ball. Uh, whenever he's in one-on-one -on -one, uh, space and opportunity, he can make guys miss. It, it, and he's, he's a guy that's a huge deep threat and a possession receiver that can do some things whenever he gets the ball in his hands. And so I'm curious, when, when Arizona brought you in, did they – did they work you out or did they just sign you? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. What they did was I did do a workout with them. And, uh, and before that whole time and, and the whole offseason, I, I was working a little job uh, actually uh, owned by Bill Duvall with uh, Lincoln Property Companies. Uh, I was working a job there mostly in the afternoons and I would come up here at the at the school and work out with Benny Wally and Cesar Martinez and those guys would work me out and uh, and uh, I would get training through Kenny Boyd and, and Donna Wynn. Uh, they would help me as far as my rehab process and, and my PT work and uh, that's basically what I did every single day. Uh, weekends I kind of had my moment to myself and so I would go and work out the whole off season and then uh, week what was that week 15 or week 14 I'm sorry week 14 I got a call from Arizona uh, my agent told me you know they want to fly me out there and work out uh, work me out so I, f I flew out there did a workout came back uh, and then a week later they actually signed me and in that workout all I was able to do was running back drills uh, they didn't ask me to run a 40 or do any of the tests so like I said I, I attribute to a blessing that God gave me but uh, it was also a blessing for me to have that opportunity with the, the injury that I actually had. And I, I think your story is a great example to show these kids that even if you don't do great on your pro day you still got a chance. To exactly jump. definitely so anything can happen you know always keep your, your hopes up high and continue to work hard and uh, you know everything will fall into place. Okay. Yep. So with all the adversity you went through, the injury, fighting through all that stuff and still making it, what would your advice be to Chris Whaley, who's also going through a similar situation? Uh, you know, I, it's one thing because I actually recruited him coming into Texas. Oh, wow. and uh, Played running back you know, with you, huh? Exactly. He was running back <laughs> with me. So I was basically his, his running back mentor, his running back big brother. And so I've always been close with Chris Whaley since he came in. And so 
uh, talking to him, I actually got to talk to him actually after it happened, the night it happened. Uh, I sent him a text message, just gave him some words of encouragement, sent him up a prayer. And uh, we've been in constant conversation ever since. Uh, I was just telling him how my process went, some of the things that he could expect uh, through his rehab process, some of the things to look out for, especially with the knee. Uh, there are times where you're up and you're feeling great, feel like you can go run a 4-4, four four, and then there are times where you're down and it feels like you're going to run a 5-4. Uh, and your knees bothering you here and there, but I've always just lifted him up, give him some words of encouragement, and just uh, make sure that he had his head on straight and keeping his mind positive. We've talked about impact in this show and how the numbers don't always sum up the impact that you had in a career. Your numbers will never justify and sum up what you've meant because it really is remarkable because of your presence now when there is a player to hit adversity, the first name that always comes up. Fozzie Whitaker and you've been that example for a lot of these guys to know there's a chance to meet some adversity and you can overcome it because they saw you do the exact same thing. Definitely, yes sir, yes sir. So we're watching Mike Davis who went through some adversity especially in his sophomore season didn't have quite the numbers that he expected after a record-setting freshman campaign where he set the Texas record for most catches by a freshman. Mac Brown said that Part of the process of a young player, though, is maturation. Learning that it's not just about you, but also you help your draft stock by helping your teammates win. Because the overall product on tape also helps draw eyes to you. And eventually, that's how you stick in the NFL, by helping teams win. Fozzie Whitaker, always fun. The pet's doing okay? Do you still have all the animals? I don't. I actually oh, had, I had to downsize now. Uh, what what happened to Chip? Oh, uh, man, I had to give Chip away. He was a little tough, man. Birds. Uh, you know I, what it I was? Understood. I dropped them. You did. Remember <laughs> you when did I drop. dropped Chip, and, your and duck? He made, and he made a little squeak, but he was fine. <laughs> but what I realized, birds have no way of controlling their bowel movement. Okay. And, <laughs> and controlling, trying to keep his, <laughs> his area <laughs> pretty yeah, clean. His daily. area. Was, was a little tough, so I, I, that was a little too much that I bit off of right yeah. there. Yeah, and uh, maybe too much that we bit off in this segment as well. <laughs> That's going to put the end of it right here. Fozzie Whitaker, he's the man. So much fun watching him here at the University of Texas and now in the NFL.